used to make fun of people that believe in things like this, but once you see it, you can't unsee it. I want to tell you guys a little bit about why I got into it and what spurred my interest in it. So I took a flight from Lisbon, Portugal, to the JFK airport in New York. A man in the row behind me had a stroke as we were flying over the Atlantic. This plane was one of the ones that had the little television screens on the back of every seat, and obviously we needed to make an emergency landing. We were all super worried for him because being halfway over the Atlantic, you have to go the rest of the way to New York. I'll show you where the JFK airport is. It's on like the bottom part of New York. And the Lisbon airport is on the bottom part of Portugal. Logically, you would think the fastest and quickest route would be to fly from the bottom of Portugal straight to New York. Everybody on my flight was really upset because the emergency landing landed in Canada at the St. John's airport. As we were all watching it on the back of our seats, we watched a plane. We were right about here. So we watched the plane go like this and then take a sharp turn all the way up to here. And everybody was like losing their stuff because we're like, this guy needs help. Why are we flying even further? So I started researching how this could have logically made sense and I couldn't find anything that made sense. And I just kept digging and digging and digging and I'm gonna show you what I found. Sorry, it's kind of blurry. This is the best image I could find. This is a flat earth map. So the Lisbon airport would be right about here. St. John's would be right about here. So it made perfect sense that we would fly from there to there, and that this was the first place that we could stop to get this man medical attention. So I started to look at different emergency landing flight paths. None of them make sense on the globe model. They all make perfect sense on the flat earth model. This was just the beginning of me getting into this. I spent two to three years at this point looking at different information, reading books, listening to podcasts, researching. There's tons of information. I'll give you a couple of my favorite points that really like drove it home for me, but feel free to do your own research. Pilot training manuals, all train manuals, they all say to assume that the earth is flat and not moving. This is one of my favorites. So Werner von Braun, I don't know if I'm saying that right, he's the founder of NASA. All his tombstone says is Psalms 19.1. Heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiwork. So for there to be a firmament, there needs to be a flat plane of existence. You really start looking into NASA. They came out in the mid 1950s. Everybody that was involved with NASA when it started was a Satanist. Satanist's only job on this planet is to get you to believe that there is no God. And the globe model does exactly that because it takes the credit away from a creator. There's a whole bunch of unclassified documents. We have Operation Fishbowl. Remember what a fishbowl looks like and look at what they were trying to do. They literally were trying to break through the firmament. Operation High Jump, Operation Paperclip, the fact that Buzz Aldrin was approached by somebody asking him to put his hand on a Bible and swear that he landed on the moon, and he responded by literally punching this man in the face. Every single astronaut is a Freemason. Pythagoras, Copernicus, literally anybody who had any influence on the globe Earth model was a Satanist. They were all practicing Freemasons. This belief gets a really bad reputation, and I believe that the Flat Earth Society is weaponized opposition, that they're put there to make people that truly believe in this look like nutcases. We don't believe that you're going to fall off the edge of the Earth. We believe that Antarctica is not a continent at the bottom but that we're surrounded by an ice wall. And I need you to look into this because there's a lot of information that can prove this. The elites use weaponized opposition to make us appear crazy. And we've been indoctrinated our entire lives to believe that the globe earth is a thing. There is so much information on this. I would love to start making TikToks on it, but I have a couple strikes on my account already. And I know TikTok does not like that type of thing. I low key want to start like a podcast. Like nothing that I can do to pressure somebody to believe in what I believe in. And that's not what I'm trying to do. But if you open your mind and look at the objective facts of things, I think you'll be really surprised because I've never seen someone look into flat earth and not believe it. Usually you don't believe when you're just looking at what the weaponized opposition is putting on the news and stuff like that. But it's really, really hard for me to deny that we live on a flat plane. And I know how crazy that sounds, believe me. If I even inspire one person to look into this and do their own research on anything, even if it's not this topic, I'll be happy. Welcome to another edition of Amanda Has Questions. Good to see you. So this right here, see this little aircraft? Ooh, yeah, he's flying. See him? It's gonna be hauling some ass. This is the North American X-15, which is a hypersonic rocket-powered aircraft. 4,520 miles per hour. This is manned. He holds the record for the fastest manned aircraft. 4,520 miles per hour. Achieved October 3rd, 1967. He was at an altitude of 102,100 feet, okay? So, 
based off of all of the information from all the great agencies that can can and do have the capacity and the ability and the tools to be able to give us all of the mathematical calculations that we need to be able to determine the curvature of the earth which is eight inches per mile squared or one degree per 69 feet which is kind of a weird number so I'm gonna round it up to 70 the earth at the equator supposedly it's 24,901 miles in circumference. So based off of that information, that's 102,000 feet in the air. So let me tell you what it is that I found. Visual daytime observations show that the minimum altitude at which curvature of the horizon can be detected at, a, at or slightly below 35,000 feet. When I looked up how much curvature should you see at 102,000 feet? Keyword horizon. So can you answer me? Where's the curve? If the globe is 24,901 miles at the equator. Can you answer that? Okay, thanks, bye. If the Earth is flat, what's the point of them lying to us? And even if it is flat, why does that matter? These are usually the starter questions that we all start with when we're trying to debunk flat Earth. The flat Earth with a dome covering proves God and proves the Bible to be true. The founder of the original globe model was Copernicus, who was one of the very first Freemasons in history. Not so ironically, NASA was started by Nazi Freemasons. This was called Operation Paperclip. We actually have documentation of this. The reason it matters that these people were Freemasons is because Freemasons work really hard to try to disprove God and to get as many people to turn away from God as possible. If we live on a semi-flat plane with a dome over the top, that creates a feeling of safety in us. If we live on a ball that's spinning at crazy speeds while rotating around the sun and the entire galaxy is apparently being thrown through space at all times, that in itself creates fear. That creates a feeling of meaninglessness. That makes people feel like, well, my life is nothing. I'm just a speck of dust in an ever-expanding black hole. I mean nothing. My life means nothing. The globe model makes believing in God near impossible. If people knew that we lived on a flat earth with a dome over top and that God and the angels were right above that dome, people would have accountability. People wouldn't act debased. People would know that there's a creator that created them specially and that their life is extremely meaningful and that they need to act right and they need to do good. The globe model creates a feeling of zero accountability. It fosters atheism and, well, we're all just on a giant rock flying through space anyways, so who cares if I do A, B, and C? Globe Earth is a direct pipeline to atheism. Flat Earth is a direct pipeline to Christianity. There's a common misconception that people that are like extremely Christian just end up being all of the flat earthers, when it's actually the other way around for the most part. People that try to debunk flat Earth and end up realizing, oh crap, I can't, they usually go from being lukewarm to like very, very Christian, or people like me who are atheists become Christian. When you start to try to debunk it and you realize you can't, and that all of the evidence points to the Bible and points back to God, you'll never turn back. You'll, you'll never see things the way you used to. Flat Earth creates a natural closeness with God. NASA is constantly telling us, oh, this star is 25 trillion light years away. That is them subconsciously programming us to believe that the heavens are so far away and out of reach and it's just impossible. There's no logical way that they would be able to measure how far away a star is if it's like 100 million light years away. If you start to look at Flat Earth and you go in with a truly open mind and try to set your biases and the indoctrination aside and trust yourself, to look at the facts and come to your own conclusions and not allow the government to do it for you, you will most likely believe in flat earth. A lot of people rely on the government and rely on NASA or some guy in a white coat that's on the TV to tell them all of their information. And what's crazy is that a lot of their information comes from math that nobody else in the world can do except NASA, apparently. No other mathematicians can do it. Only they can. Did I mention the meaning of the word NASA is to beguile or deceive? And we start being indoctrinated the second we leave the womb. We've all seen the outer space themed stuff in babies' rooms. There's always this little cradle thingy to show them outer space. As soon as they're old enough, we have them watching Disney movies. Look at what's over the castle. Did I mention that Walt Disney was besties with Werner von Braun, who was the founder of NASA? You cannot watch a movie where they don't show you a globe or a representation of the firmament at least once. Look at the Universal logo. 
this is all subconscious programming. If they show this to us enough times, they're going to make it so it's like near impossible to not believe it. There are thousands of pop culture references to the Flat Earth, and I'm gonna show you a few where you've probably seen the movies, but you miss the references. So first we have The Truman Show. This is a movie starring Jim Carrey. He basically grows up and when he's like 30, he discovers that he lives on the set of a television show. And at the end of the movie, he sails to the ends of the ocean, hits a wall, and then realizes that he can like go up it, up the stairs, and there's like producers, like they're running his entire reality. Like it's all fake. This is where they broadcast the show from in the movie. Next up we have the Simpsons movie and the Simpsons has a lot of firmament references. Then we have The Hunger Games, a movie where the government lives ridiculously lavishly and then puts random people into a dome arena where they have to fight to the day, constantly throw obstacles at them to keep them divided and keep them constantly on edge. At the end of the movie, Katniss gets out of the arena by shooting a bow and arrow up into the dome and it like breaks reality and they all get let out of the Hunger Games. Part of their thing is that they love putting the truth in plain sight. If I were to simplify, why would they want to keep this a huge secret? It'd just be this. But if you're looking for a much deeper explanation, basically to keep us from finding ourselves in God's image, the reason why he created us, our purpose, our great purpose, our designed purpose, and the father of lies has achieved this by making us believe that we are the flesh and not the spirit. When in spirit, we are all in one and one and all. And as we start separating from the spirit and start believing the flesh, we start believing the social construct that is laid out in front of us and start separating ourselves by borders, race, social class. And eventually we get old enough to join the rat race, the never ending rat race that makes us desire more and more and more, do more, be more, have more, making it much harder to, to, to find our higher self. But the worst thing that happens is that we get into these orchestrated wars that are for limited resources but are really unlimited but are really designed for you and I to kill each other and keep the ones telling the lie in control. Can someone please tell me how the Red Bull Space Jump shows the same exact amount of detectable curvature on the horizon from surface level on the ground and then from 127,000 feet and it also matches the exact same curvature of the supposed spacewalk that SpaceX performed. Now isn't that pretty interesting? And not to mention these hurricanes that keep popping up. With their very odd trajectory, their flight paths just don't really make sense for them to be natural. But of course it's natural, guys. And of course this is an actual video of the hurricane on our globe. But let's talk about these hurricanes. Have you noticed how they're going through very specific areas with vested government interest? Have you noticed how these vested areas are completely destroyed and then no one seems to really help what's going on, like in North Carolina? Why don't you look into what these tools are doing to the environment and how they're affecting it? But of course the natural weather patterns, well, they're natural. None of this is real and all of these are just completely made up, but I suggest you do some research on HARP, DARPA, and a few other things. Here's what I think the planets really are. This comment is from a video I made where I shared my theory that stars are really angels, but now we're gonna do the planets with some interesting biblical stuff that links everything together. Let's start by finding out what the word planet is derived from. When I'm wondering something or trying to form a theory, I always start with the meanings of the words because every single one of our words has deep meaning and tells a story. So the word planet means to wander. So I have two theories and I'm not 100% stuck on either of them, but I'll give you both. So the first one is that maybe they're actually archangels. My logic for this one would be that there were seven archangels in the Bible and seven planets outside of Earth. So the problem with theorizing that there are archangels would do away with this definition. The archangels were not known to wander. But the thing that makes me wonder if these might possibly be bad entities is that they're all named after Greek and Roman false gods. Or it could be a classic Freemason switcheroo where maybe these are archangels and bad people here named them after false gods as like a slap in the face to Christianity. So here we have a chart of the planet and the corresponding demons. So notice how Saturn is Zazel, which is Satan. The sun is Sorath. So most of us are not familiar with Sorath, so I'll show you. So Sorath is the one that's associated with the number. Basically, he's worse than Satan. He's like the most powerful one. This is another reason why I believe in geocentrism, because the demon that's associated with the sun is the most powerful one, and we switch to heliocentrism, everything revolving around the sun, like a hundred years ago. So Jude one thirteen says, Their wild waves of the sea, foaming up their shame, wandering stars, for whom the blackness of darkness has been reserved forever. What I take away from this is, number one, it's definitely referencing the waters above 
because the wild waves of the sea foaming up at their shame wandering stars so we know that the meaning of the word planet is basically a wandering star for whom the blackness of darkness has been reserved forever i personally definitely think that it's more likely that there is some kind of bad entity i also wanted to throw in a weird coincidence that i ran into when i was initially researching this so according to the book of enoch 200 angels fell from heaven and i started to think where did they fall oh yeah earth so then i looked up how many craters we have on earth <laughs> guys there are no coincidences and if there are there are not as many as you can pull from topics like this one. I'm not completely married to a specific idea because I'm not really sure myself. It's really tough to find information about this. Nobody really talks about it and there's not too much that I can like look through to get a better idea. But I personally believe it's gotta be one or some mixture of the things I just mentioned. What do you guys think though? Let me know. Let me know if there's anything I missed that would help me piece this together a little bit. And as always, this is for entertainment purposes only. And these are strictly my opinions. Your compass will function properly with a fixed source in the center if you add this static all right this is our south pole let's have a constant south pole now look look it's not working it's not working because we have two field acting on it at the same time get rid of our south pole that doesn't exist and has no evidence Weird. Weird. Now our compass functions properly. Let's add the constant force of a south pole that doesn't exist. Compass does not work. Take away the south pole that doesn't exist. Compass works fine. Add the south pole. Compass doesn't work. Take the south pole away. Compass works fine. There is no south pole. And the truth shall set you free from the doctors, the professionals, the religious, the authorities. You know how it says on the dollar bill, in God we trust? What God do you think they are serving? If the same Jesus came back today, without a doubt, many Christians, many woke people would do the same thing to Jesus. They would not like the truth. And he wouldn't have to mention flat earth to piss people off. Satan, the god of this world, has blinded the minds of those who don't believe. For they are unable to see the glorious light of the good news. They don't understand this message about the glory of Christ, who is the exact likeness of God. It is what it is. It came in the mail and y'all are opening it with me. <laughs> Ooh. Here we go. The flat earth map dates back over 1000 years. This map is credited to being created by a Persian astronomer. His name was Al Biruni and he lived between 973 AD to 1048 AD. It's the official map of the United Nations and also the United States Geological Survey. It used to be present in many places before the creation of NASA and the Antarctic Treaty in 1959. Here you see it with Admiral Byrd. This map has been restored by Dmitri from Russia with suggestions of mine, Idia Lenkar. Known by my YouTube channel Flat Earth Benjo, I asked Dmitri to include the Bermuda Triangle and Point Nemo, a place deep in the Pacific where NASA buries rockets. Then Robert Tazi, a professional mapmaker, came along and enhanced the map even more. There are many people now selling this map online, but if you could order it from my online store, I would greatly appreciate it. Visit my online store now, and order one of the items. I humbly thank you. <laughs>